Good morning from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's around six in the morning. Got up at five, but it's like an hour behind where I came from. So kind of like waking up at six. It's already 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Feels kind of nice though. It's the old dry heat sort of thing. Feels like you're really in like one of those uh, saunas. Feels exactly like that. So it's kind of like free outdoor sauna. Uh, yeah, so I got in yesterday. I'm gonna play in the World Series of Poker this morning at 10 in the morning. Starts the uh, first tournament I'm gonna play in. Play a little cash game last night. Uh, doubled my money, which is quite normal, uh, especially when you're playing tourists. <laughs> uh, so I think the competition today is gonna be quite a bit harder. Um, but that's how I used to travel, actually, just travel around and play uh, poker. Every place I'd go, every country I'd went to, the first place I'd go is the casino to play poker. I usually make a lot of money, usually pay for my entire stay in the country. Uh, just uh, first night playing poker usually. Not every time, but usually. Uh, so I only played for like an hour last night. Didn't even have... Uh, I had a couple good hands, but uh, I made most of the money just bluffing. Uh, it was quite easy, you could see they were, they were too scared. <laughs> so, anyway, I was looking forward to seeing how I play against some better competition today. And uh, I have no idea where I'm going to walk here. Uh, this place is so confusing. I left the hotel and the guy's like, you want a taxi? He's like, no, I'm going to walk. He's like, it's 110 degrees. I was like, yeah, it's fine. Um, See, so yeah, I'm at the Rio here. That's where the uh, World Series is. Um, see palms over there. I guess I'll just walk down one of these blocks. This street looks all right. Not too busy, but not busy at all. Let's go down here. So, uh, man, I've been still super enjoying not drinking and not smoking. Uh, yesterday, well, I played actually last year in the World Series of Poker right before Freedom Fest. And uh, I still remember how hard it was sitting through like the three hour level without a cigarette. And it was really bothering me. And also, I was a bit hungover from the night before, wasn't really feeling good. It's so nice just last night to sit down and I just had my headphones on. I was kind of almost like meditating at the table. And just, you know, just feeling good. Just so, such a different, such a different way to live and so much better. Um, and it got me thinking about how my life has already changed just by doing this stuff um, because I remember like you may have noticed like I started doing these dollar vigilante videos uh, a couple months ago and before that I was like uh, I can't go on camera every day I feel like crap I look like crap I just felt like uns like I, I almost felt like shaky it wasn't like I had the shakes I didn't feel like comfortable in my own skin almost. I felt, just felt like everything was off. And you know, part of that's just uh, when you're drinking a lot. And I wasn't even drinking a ton in the last year, but it still affects you. Like maybe I drink uh, once a week or something, but it would still be in my bloodstream. And, and I just felt off. They got my vibrational levels off. And I knew every time I'd get back to like meditation and that kind of stuff, I'd be like, okay, I feel so, this feels amazing. But I always thought, ah, a couple of drinks won't hurt. Ah, forget that. No more, never again. Um, but because I've stopped now completely, it's really a, a feeling of freedom. Like, this is the exact same thing that happened when I quit smoking. A lot of people say, oh, quitting smoking is gonna be so hard. Uh, and uh, drinking as well. I've seen even when I, I posted a video a couple days ago saying I'm never going to drink again. And I mean it. And it's not even going to be hard. <laughs> it's just like obvious that I'm never going to do that again because it brings nothing good into my life. It's nothing but negative stuff. But a lot of people said, wow, that's, that'd be the hardest thing ever to quit completely. It actually isn't at all. <laughs> uh, smoking was nothing. And drinking was nothing. But... I did try to stop drinking numerous times over the last, you know, 10 years. And it was hard because I didn't have the right mindset. Uh, there was brainwashing still in my head. And 
that's what people need to realize and that's what those books uh, the easy way to stop smoking and the easy way to control alcohol by Alan Carr man these blocks are so huge <laughs> everything's so spread out um, hey a liquor a beer and wine sir it's a lot of that here um, they uh, but people think it's really hard, but it's actually a mindset. It's a, bra uh, it's a brainwashing, just like statism to an extent. You know, once you become an anarchist, you're like, how, how could you ever become a statist again? Now, there has been some people who have said they were anarchists and have gone back to statism recently because they're scared of, because <laughs> they're pussies, <laughs> total pussies. So scared, are you scared, are you scared? Oh, this life is scary, life is scary. Bunch of cucks. But anyway, a bunch of them thought they were anarchists, uh, but they, they, they weren't strong enough to be anarchists. They were feeble uh, losers. But uh, the point is, if you really become an anarchist, if you really understand it, see, those guys didn't. They, they liked it because, oh, everyone seems cool. All the, you know, anarchy is a new cool thing, by the way. Yeah, I, I call myself an anarchist. No, I'm cool. But they weren't ready. They're not strong enough. But, uh, but once you get it, like, so many people say this, you can never go back to, oh, I, I want to, statism is legitimate, it's a good thing, uh, it's a good thing for the world, uh, I support statism, you can't. And it's the exact same thing when you get the brainwashing gone from things like cigarettes or alcohol or really anything, even like food. Like, I can't believe my lifestyle now. If you would have told me it, that I had to come to Vegas uh, and uh, not drink, not smoke, not eat any of the kind of food that they really have in most places here, uh, I would have been like, it's, no, <laughs> no way would I do it. And now I do it like without even thinking about it. Um, I had the crappiest food I ever had. Like when I say crappy, I mean like the worst for me food. Uh, yesterday, I was really hungry, um, which I rarely get. But you know, you get traveling and you're on planes, and you get thrown off your your uh, your balance. And uh, I go into the room. There's no mini bar or anything to like get anything, like, no peanuts or anything. And you start to get into like, oh, I'm getting hungry, and he's so I just went downstairs. And the first place I saw was a pho place, Vietnamese pho. I love pho. I thought, because that's, I'm not even supposed to eat that. I had vegetarian, of course, I had it with tofu. But uh, I'm not even really on my diet supposed to eat any noodles, any pasta, any rice, because that clogs the sea up. Uh, but I ate it, and it was delicious, I gotta say. Uh, but I, I still kind of feel it today already. So that's, you know, the most healthiest thing that I've ever really eaten. And it's making me feel kind of crappy because it's not as healthy as I have been. Um, but man, it's so spread out. It's so depressing, Vegas, in many ways. To see all these people in these casinos. Um, and there's no light in there. And you just see those people in front of those machines just pulling the lever. And a lot of them drinking, and there's bags under their eyes. And you know, there's so much more. They don't, they've fallen for the lie of the Matrix that they're nothing special. They're just gonna have to get on their, get their government check and play the slots until they die or something. They don't realize who and what they actually are. Um, so speaking of that, that's the whole point. Man, I take a while to get to the point on these things. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Let me know in the comments. Should I really just get to the point? Because people don't have a lot of time nowadays. They have AD&D. Or do you like the rambling? Or maybe I should put out two different videos. One where I like have someone edit it down to like the important parts that I really wanted to get across. And then if you want to watch all the rambling, you can watch that too. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but my whole point of this whole video is I think I drank a lot in my life because I was scared to be the real me. Uh, I was scared to become the truest, most, ath most authentic version of myself. Uh, and I'll explain that. And I'll explain why I think it's really important that everyone does that. Um,
trying to think how I should start to explain this. Well, let me explain it this way. When I first started Dollar Vigilante, a lot of the stuff I write, a lot of people say is kind of extreme. Now, to me, it doesn't seem that extreme. To me, it just seems like that's the truth. Like, I'm not writing it because I think it's extreme. I'm like, this needs to be said. It needs to be said that governments are evil, central banks are evil, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> But uh, I remember it was really hard to write it at the beginning. So I was saying a lot of stuff that most people weren't saying. And so it's kind of like this, that's what the matrix kind of does, is it keeps everyone from feeling a bit of fear or whatever it is to be a little different. And the thing is, we all need to be different. Uh, we all need to be ourselves. We all need to be our individual selves. We're, we're here for whatever reason, and we're all special in our own way. And what the system wants us to do is make us all the same. <clears throat> That's why we go to the, they push us into these schools. You gotta be like everyone else. Be like everyone else. If you're something weird, oh, that's a weirdo. Um, but when I started writing The Dollar Vigilante, a view of Vegas here. It was kind of hard, because I was like calling out whatever, calling them terrorists, the government terrorists. And it felt really like, ooh, should I say this, you know? A lot of people, you know? That's how I felt, it feels, it sounds weird to me now to say that because I have no problem at all saying it now. I'm just used to doing it. I'm totally fine with saying that stuff now. But when I first started, it was kind of hard because it was like really, like I'd hit enter and I'd be like, well, people think I'm crazy. Will they hate me? Will I get killed by the government? I don't even know, it just seemed kind of scary. And I would drink uh, when I, I wrote a lot of those blogs. Uh, not a lot, like it wasn't like I was drunk, but I'd have some drinks. It would kind of like numb uh, myself from having to feel that kind of nervousness or that kind of fear. Not a real fear, but like a uncomfortableness. Uh, and uh, so in the beginning, I thought it was helping me, right? I was like, I couldn't really do this, we couldn't really write this stuff, which is, you know, a lot of people seem to like now, uh, but I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could do it without the alcohol, so I thought the alcohol was helping me. But in fact, it really wasn't. And over time, it definitely wasn't. And I also thought the alcohol was giving me some level of confidence, which is pretty stupid in my opinion when I look back on it. So, you know, I have to speak at a conference. I'd, I'd always have a couple glasses of wine beforehand. I thought it made me more confident. It was actually doing the exact opposite. Because by doing that, I wasn't being myself 100%. I, the alcohol was affecting me, just like any drug. And so I was, there's me and then there's drunk or drinking me. Two different people, I don't know what, why, but they are. And, uh, I became very schizophrenic, actually, at one point. Uh, but anyway, so I thought it was giving me confidence, but it wasn't. And so it was only in the last couple of months when I really started getting into all the stuff I'm doing now. Stopped smoking, started meditation, started all this kind of stuff. Uh, um, eating better, stopped drinking as much. Uh, and pretty much stopped drinking. Like, I really stopped drinking a couple months ago, but I only drank when I went on trips. Uh, so, but other than that, I wasn't drinking. So I, when I was at home, even a couple months ago, I was feeling like good. And all of a sudden, and when, you, when you're feeling like that, all of a sudden the world seems to open up. And all of a sudden I saw the opportunities. And all of a sudden I had all these creative ideas. And one of them was, why am I just doing my Dollar Vigilante videos with just voiceover without my face on the camera? And the reason was, because I didn't feel confident, I didn't feel happy with myself, I felt like I wasn't being my true, most authentic self. I didn't think that consciously, but looking back, that's exactly what was happening. I was kind of ashamed of myself. I was like, I knew I wasn't doing something right. And I didn't want to show the world that. And, uh, but once I got sort of cleaned up, got everything, all that stuff out of my life, everything just started to, it's amazing. It's, it's absolutely amazing. 
because you do really create your own reality and I could talk more about that but uh, but when you're not doing and this is what a lot of people say this you're not doing what you're meant to do but it's really kind of a little hard to know what you're meant to do right I think what you're meant to do is whatever feels right trying to think about this because I'm, I'm talking on the fly here I'm not <laughs> I didn't even think about this before I even said it being your actual self yeah because we're so restricted most people aren't being themselves because of the society of the cult of the matrix whatever you want to call it their uh, upbringing uh, told to sit down shut up from the almost the day they're born you want to go to the washroom in school put your hand up if the teacher yells that you've been bad you better feel bad that's all meant to limit you so that at some point you won't become your truest, most authentic self. You'll become sort of like everyone else, uh, a bot in the machine. I don't know, traffic lights anymore. Everyone's so weird. Nothing flows like in Mexico. In Mexico you just go if, it's, if you can go. It's so weird coming back to a place where everything's so controlled and everyone's so weird. It's like, can I go? We're going to get extorted by road pirates. I, uh, it's like, oh, land of the free. Uh, all right, so I crossed the road. That was stressful. Everything's stressful in the land of the free. Look at that. Everyone just sitting there. There's no cars. Just go. See? That's the whole, that's the whole matrix right there. And they're, they don't even think about it. They'll sit there for five minutes. There's not a car on the road. Because <laughs> they've been trained. So all these people are not being, they're not being their most truest, most authentic form of themselves. They're actually not even close. They're scared to say anything they feel. And just this guy, I forget what his name is. All of a sudden he blew up in the last couple of months and I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden he's all over my YouTube. It's that college professor from Canada. I forget his name. Uh, Jared or something? It's not the subway guy, but uh, Jordan, Jordan something. Jordan Peterson or something. That right, that sounds close. Anyway, why did I bring him up? Oh, I brought him up. Well, first of all, it's weird that he's all over the place now, which kind of makes me wonder if there's a reason. Like, because usually, because I've been saying a lot of stuff, a lot of people have been saying this stuff. We're not all over the place. This guy says a couple of things, which are pretty alt-right sort of sounding. And now he's like famous. You got to wonder anytime someone gets like that, because they're usually being promoted by the system, by the matrix, by the elites, by the globalists, whatever you want to call them. And uh, anyway, he did have a video that I didn't watch, but I liked the title. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe this guy's all right. He was like, always say how you feel. Like never restrict yourself. That was basically the, what I saw from the title. So I was like, okay, maybe this guy's all right. Because that's, that's good advice. I'll never feel like you should, you know, if you're sitting there talking with some people, and they go, I really think the government's great. And the other guy goes, I think the government's great. And you don't feel that way? And you don't say it because you're worried they won't like you or something? Say it. <laughs> You'll be amazed, actually. I've been in so many situations because I don't, I don't really care. I, I'm just going to say stuff. <laughs> uh, to me, that's just the way you're supposed to do things. And uh, you'd be shocked how many times I'll be with people that you would never know. And they'll say... Yeah, gotta support the truth, right? And then the guy goes, gotta support the truth. They'll be like, fuck that. They're freaking hired murderers uh, doing terrorism on the behalf of corporate overlords. And a lot of people, not all the time, especially in the U.S., it's a little harder. But a lot of the time, people will go, yeah, I totally feel that way too, but I didn't want to say it. That happens so many times. In fact, that's a big reason why I'm kind of popular myself. So many people say, you're saying the things that I can't say. You can say them. And please say them. <laughs> And you'll be surprised. It will actually be way better than not saying them. Don't have that fear. Get rid of that fear. Be the truest form of yourself. If you believe something, say it. And also, if, you, if it turns out you were wrong on what you said, admit it. These are basic little rules of life. I don't know which way to go here. I don't want to go that way because it looks like a big highway. I'm going to go through this parking lot. Basic little rules of life. But if everyone did, it'd be so much better. So, anyway, um, 
So I didn't feel like I was being the truest, most, most authentic form of myself. I didn't, and I also had a lack of confidence, which is actually from the cigarettes and the alcohol, which I thought were helping me with things like that. That's why it's so uh, tricky, those things. So I'll give you one example. So the other day, I was at that conference and Robert Kiyosaki flipped out on me. If I was drinking, I probably wouldn't have told too many people about it. I think I mentioned this in my other video, or I mentioned it somewhere, maybe I just told someone this. I wouldn't have probably uh, talked about it publicly because there would have been a little thing in the back of my mind, like maybe I caused that because I was drinking, maybe he saw I was drinking and he saw how pathetic I was and that's why he went off on me. You know, this is what goes through your head. But I wasn't drinking, so I was just like, much more attached to reality than normal. So I'm like, no, I didn't do anything wrong. I asked him a question and he had some sort of psychotic break. And so now, because I have a lot of, like I feel confident in myself because I know that that was the case. Like you could talk, yeah, maybe I, I should have used a different word. Someone said, you shouldn't have just said, are you an anarchist? You just said, are you a voluntarist? He knows what the meaning of those words are, I think. Anyway, even I, I, I said it right after. I said a narco-capitalist said an anarchist, and he still flipped out. So it was not my problem. That guy's got a problem. Actually, I got at least one person. There was a couple, I think. But one for sure contacted me, and he's like, oh, yeah, you're totally right on, on Kiyosaki. Uh, I won't tell you, uh, even over the Internet. It sounds very serious. He's like, but next time we're face-to-face, -face, I'll tell you my experience with him. So anyway, so he's like, yeah, you were totally right on your instincts. And I'm like, yeah, I have more confidence in my instincts now uh, that I've stopped drinking, stopped smoking, eating good, uh, feeling more connected, meditating, so, you know, just sort of, I've, you know, that gives you confidence. But it's funny because most people will drink to get some confidence, right? Like a lot of guys will say, I, I can't go up and talk to a girl on the street. This is a whole Sasha Day game sort of thing. But they go to a bar and they get drunk and then all of a sudden they can. But what you don't realize, and this is something I learned over years and years, is you're totally not on your game when you're drunk. And the only time that it'll really work even in a bar is if the girl's really drunk. So then you got two people who are just really drunk. And it's just a big mess. You can wake, both wake up in the morning and feel like crap and both be kind of ashamed. Not good. <laughs> anyway. So... Yeah, I never knew what it meant. I, people used to always tell me, or not tell me, but I'd, I'd read or see stuff. Be the truest, most authentic version of yourself. And when I used to hear that, I always used to go, yeah, of course I am. Who else would I be? That's what I am. But I didn't realize that I wasn't because I was drinking, because I was smoking, because I had some fear of what other people thought. Uh, I wouldn't say all the time exactly how I felt. So I wasn't. I wasn't being uh, that. And now I am. And it feels really good. Like I feel... I'm doing... I'm so productive. It's crazy. Like I am loving this new lifestyle. And I'm loving how I feel, you know? And it's not just like the health. It's not like he, I could wake up at 5 and go for a walk. Uh, oh, here's the World Series entrance. I'll walk up there and get on camera, but um, it's not like just the health part. It's, it's like I feel like I finally doing what I was supposed to be doing and doing it the right way. Or even my speech the other day at Red Pill. Usually I have a few drinks before the speech. Usually the night before I've gone out, I'm kind of a little off. I still give okay speeches. A lot of people still say, oh, you were the best uh, speaker at this conference or whatever. That's kind of sad, <laughs> but uh, you know, like I said before, I could always get by doing how I was doing it, but I was on a different level. Watch my speech uh, and tell me what you think. You know, I was so clear, uh, there was no problems, and I felt confident, right? I was saying a lot of uh, things that a lot of people uh, think is crazy. I talked about how the moon landing was obviously faked, and I totally believe that. And uh, you know, in the past, I might have kind of not said it as strongly or even not said it because I'd be a little worried because there'd be this little thing in the back of my mind well you've been drinking maybe uh, that's maybe you're wrong on this one maybe the all these uh, 
matrix dwellers were right on this one. You know, that's what it is. So, here's the World Series entrance. Actually, the tournament starts at 10. It's around probably close to 7 now. So, uh, I still need to go to the gym. I still need to do a bunch of work. So, I should get back. I'm going to try to go into the front entrance. Maybe I can go down here. Um, but yeah, so so many people are like, well, I got to go to school for 12 years and I got to go for four more and I got to get this piece of paper and then I got to go get a, a death pledge, a mortgage uh, and a job. And then when I'm 70, I can sit on the beach. <laughs> no, do not do that. I can't go this way. Do not do that. Um, do what you think is what you want to do and the world will open up to you and you might not know even what you want to do a lot of people say that like if you're younger that's totally normal what you got to do is just go out and do stuff and figure out what you want to do and you're not going to figure it out in school actually this is the worst place to go to learn <laughs> uh, like I said then check out my uh, videos I almost got kind of like viral considering no one even knew about this channel like a month ago my video about hop on the back of a train and uh, uh, you know if you're a young guy just hop on the back of the train I forget the exact name of the title but that's gone kind of viral considering it was like no one even knew about this channel so that uh, obviously um, resonated with a lot of people so yeah if you're like 19 year old guy I talk to the guys more than the girls to own I'm a guy I don't understand exactly what women want but I know I'm pretty sure I know what guys want and uh, and I've been a guy my whole life, so it's like I, I've been around them my whole life. I know, I'm pretty sure I understand the guy stuff. The girl stuff, not as much. So, I, you know, forgive me if I don't give too much advice to women. But first of all, I don't want to assume a lot of stuff. And secondly, I, I truly don't understand because they are different. They don't have the same uh, desires in general as men. Men are more like we got to get out there. We got to not to say fight, but like, you know, get out and conquer and all that kind of stuff and women are a little bit more leaning towards they'd rather just stay where they are and talk and everything be nice and you know not I hate generalizing but that in general I think that's true so for the guys out there yeah if you're young don't go to school total waste of time total waste of money um, and then what you're gonna get a job and uh, work on someone else's dream now it's okay like to do that if you don't have any experience right so I always have younger uh, guys as employees and uh, they don't know how to do anything, right? So they're getting work experience by working for me and that's great. And I hope that after a couple years, they get enough experience that they do their own thing because that's what you should do. In the meantime, definitely work to help someone else build their dream uh, and, until you get enough experience and know what you want to do and then go build yours. And it could be anything, especially in today's age. It's so easy with the internet because you have access to 7 billion people market right there and it's free. Do you know how hard that would have been to do 50 years ago? It'd be impossible. Now it's right there. So if your passion is making, I can't even think of what's the most ridiculous thing. Uh, sombreros for hamsters. <laughs> and you just think it's the funniest, greatest thing you love waking up and making different colors sombreros, different styles for hamsters, and you like putting a little strap around them, you like taking their pictures, you think it's fine, you think, you think that's the greatest thing you could do. You could actually just do that, start up sombreros, hamsterswithsombreros.com, and you probably make decent money, because there's seven billion people. If only 0.0001% of them uh, really like what you like, you got a huge market, you got like 10 million people. Math's probably wrong, but something like that though. So, the one thing that most people don't know is they have a lot of fear of failure. You actually can never fail. All you can do is learn. So actually, the, the whole education system, system's all wrong. A lot of people go, I gotta go to school to learn. It's like, no, you do life to learn. <laughs> uh, you go to school if you just wanna waste money. <laughs> uh, that's basically all it is. So let's get out there and do it. Be, be, don't let anyone tell you what you can or cannot be. 
that's the matrix. Like I said in my last video, where I'm living the dream, if you would have told me what I'm doing uh, would actually happen, a couple, like 10 years ago, I would never have believed it. So I'm gonna make a lot of money just being this anarchist guy who talks about Austrian economics, how evil the government is, um, and uh, who uh, talks about cryptocurrencies, which didn't even exist 10 years ago, right? And I'll do really well. I wouldn't have believed it. Or maybe I would have actually, because when I did start it, um, I, I told people this is going to be big. So I always have that. But you know what everyone told me? No, it won't. <laughs> so if I would have listened to them, but you also create your own reality. That's what you got to realize. You totally create your own reality. Like, life isn't really real. <laughs> like, it's not as real as most people think. And so you can do whatever you want. You just have to do it. Um, so it's, it's do it or not. Be yourself or be like the machine. Be part of the machine. I'll tell you, you're never going to be happy being part of the machine. I can see them all inside this casino. Uh, they all believe that. They believe they're having a great time sitting in front of that slot machine. Woo. Hey, if you like the slot machine, great. But I, they don't look very happy. I don't know how they could be happy. I guess it's possible. Anything's possible. But uh, yeah. So be the truest. Oh, I think I went the wrong way. I don't even know where I am. Oh, can I go in here? Maybe I can go in this entrance. It's so confusing. These buildings are so huge. Yeah, don't let anyone tell you what you can and cannot be. And don't have any fear. Look at my lifestyle now. Like Other than just traveling around for work and coming to play the World Series of Poker. But I could really make $20 a month uh, if I didn't have a family who didn't want stuff. But if I was by myself... And I'd be fine, because I eat fruits and vegetables, which I could grow all myself if I wanted. I don't really spend money on anything else. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, what if I go somewhere and I run out of money? It's like, you'd be fine. It always works out fine. You have to, that's what this whole faith thing's all about. Have faith. The universe, God, whatever you want to call it, takes care of you. And especially takes care of you if you are really trying to do what you were meant uh, to do by coming here. And a lot of the time, that's also helping other people. And that's why even things like capitalism is good. The things I'm doing, right? Of course, the narco communists will say, oh, you dirty capitalist. You're doing a narco poco because you want to make some money in Dollar Vigilante. You're just selling people on these cryptocurrencies which have made them all fortunes because you want to make some money. Uh, that was the whole reason. Uh, that I, the whole reason I did everything I'm doing now, Andercast, that, that was not about money at all. Uh, I never, I actually spent so much doing it because so I was paying people to do it so I don't want to, it takes a lot of time to put those videos together. And uh, so I probably lost about tens of thousands of dollars doing it for the first three, four years. It was only after uh, Narcopoco became an idea, create your own reality, right? Uh, that it, it had the uh, potential to help make money. But am I doing it because, just because I want to make money? No, I started it with no intention at all of making money. But see, that's the thing. <laughs> just do stuff and it will come. Uh, but you just have to get over the fear. And it, there's only one way to get over the fear. Only one way. And drinking's not going to help you. It's going to make it worse. You have to just do it. Just take the step off take one foot off that ledge take one step off of that staircase and just go and let it go and it's going to feel to some people not to me as much for whatever reason but to a lot of people it's a scary thing oh my god and i quit my job what's going to happen i remember when i quit my job at the bank i wasn't that scared because i knew uh the thing i was doing was going to make a lot of money I, it was already making some money so that was like e so easy uh, but maybe you don't, like if you have no money at all and you have this thing you want to do, maybe you want to be like a, start a dog spa slash yoga retreat where people drop off their dogs and uh, they go to spa treatment and they do yoga while they're waiting. It's a crazy idea, right? But maybe that's, you, that's your dream. 
and right now you're working at a restaurant or something and the restaurant's paying the bills for your apartment for your car stuff like that well you might want to just keep working for a couple more months and just save as much as you can do not spend any money make sure you got a couple thousand dollars you know just in case uh, that sort of thing like maybe be a little careful but not too careful at all um, and really like like I said worst case scenario you live in the woods in a tent and you eat fruit and you're gonna be ripped yeah feeling great looking great uh, all I just eat fruit and raw vegetables and barely just for six hours a day uh, so you can grow all that yourself just have a little tent there's nothing to worry about nothing the only thing to worry about is not doing any of this stuff the worry is 40 years from now you're working at some job you hate and you're fat and unhappy and depressed that's what you should worry about so don't do that so just get rid of the fear and like I said there's only one way to get rid of the fear and that's just to do it and what you'll find every time I've had a small fear about something this happens all the time anyone who bungee jumps anyone skydives as soon as it's over they go that was the most awesome thing ever and they feel exhilarated they're full of adrenaline they're like well I can't believe I, I was so worried about that my whole life that was maybe the best thing I've ever done I saw someone say that right after they bungee jumped in Acapulco he was so scared he actually did a couple shots of tequila it's fine whatever whatever but at least he got it over with and he was so scared and as soon as he jumped he actually went and did it three times <laughs> You know, that's what happens. The fear is not, is, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. It was a president who said that. They sometimes, every now and then, they say something decent. But uh, that's truly the case. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. So just get out there and do it. Be the truest, most authentic form of yourself. Have no fear what anyone says. In fact, just laugh at them. Because anyone who's, who's trying to make fun of you or try to put you down they're the people who are trapped in the matrix they know it too that's why they kind of hate us because they're like oh he got out I'm too scared to get out I'm gonna mock him let him mock we see him for what they are be yourself take chances have no fear and uh, that's how we change the world. That's how we create our own reality. You'll see if you do it. <laughs>